Welcome back. We're continuing with priming of the already built tractor. We're gonna use AK uh, red primer combined with uh, black primer in order to achieve uh, better coloring of the pre-rust tractor. Here we're gonna mist him. In the background you can see the compressor which is set to almost two bars or 25 psi which is a bit high but anyway I prefer it that way so we're gonna mix the paints as you can see here primers and then we'll continue with priming the tractor Hey again, we are continuing with painting the tractor. This is what we have for the primer combination, which is relatively nice color, simulating rust. And we are not gonna paint the tractor in full. We're gonna add some shades using rust effects from AK. We usually use uh, Gunze paints or Tamiya, but this time for the sake of uh, diversity we're gonna use AK so uh, they're gonna be used straight out of the bottle and have fun watching us paint Okay, we are adding a more pale color of rust. As you can see, that's some different shades. You don't have to worry about the colors because they're gonna be beneath the standard paint and only the chips will show what's underneath it as you can hear the environment this is an outside view of the tractor I wanted to show you in the sunlight just to show you the difference as you can see the paint is not yet right this is just right after the painting but in the daylight you can see how nice those paints are applied and too bad we're gonna lose this because we're gonna chip it and we're gonna paint a green layer over it we're gonna use hairspray to spray over it as a chipping medium and afterwards we're gonna paint the color of the hood which will be different from the color of the tractor 
as if it was made afterwards. This is how you do it. It dries very fast and that's enough. That's actually more than enough. And we're gonna wait a bit. Start painting the other color over it. We are starting with the gray. We're gonna use those three colors. And I'm gonna paint over the hairspray. This is just the first layer of the paint. We're going to apply a couple more to get the nuances. That's a technique used and popularized by Michael Rinaldi, one of the gods of uh, armor scale modeling. And he swears to that technique and he's very good at it. So. Thanks to his books, many of us know about it and now we can use it freely without the need of experiment every once in a while. To the first pane we add a few drops of blue to make a new color which will give us a lot more for the eye. This is the second shade. A little bit bluish. Even if you can't tell the difference now, you won't be able to after we chip it. This is so-called eye candy. It's a candy for the eye because it cheats you and distracts you, especially at the show. This is an important thing to, to do. Is that we add a few drops of white or the gray that I showed you. And a couple of drops of isopropyl alcohol or any diluting medium to dilute it just to make some sort of a fog. This is the final step, white. We're doing the white where eventually the sun gonna pale it. So the next is chipping. This is chipping. We're gonna use tap water, pre-moisten it to activate the hairspray or the chipping medium, whatever you decided to use. And we're going to start rubbing it with the brush. This is the starting point from which we're going to do the weathering. The chipping will be used as a guideline 
where the streaks gonna go where the rust spots are gonna be where the accumulated rust is gonna stick and so on It's important to clean your brush quite often and if you use the weaker medium you can add a thinner like EPA or even something stronger to activate the layer beneath. We use pretty harsh hairspray so our job is quite easy. Application of the hairspray just before the paint. We'll continue with the paint. This is gonna be our first layer of green paint. After which we're gonna apply nuances of paler or dilute it with uh, lighter colors like these green to simulate the sun fading Once painted green, we are adding a lighter shade of green, highly diluted with EPA. We're going to mix it and we're going to spray it over thin layers over the previous paint. Very thin. This is the result after the second layer. Now we're going to add some yellow into the leftovers of that paint. And we're going to simulate the sun effect. We have the highly diluted yellow with the leftovers of the green. We're going to paint on the tractor.
And we, as before, we're gonna pre moisten the surface and then we're gonna start chip it. it off the outside so it will be more visible on the video We're gonna use toothpick to make scratches like if it was scratch from passing through something. As you can see the tapping motion creates different kinds of chips. You can use whatever you like, stiff brush, soft brush, white, whatever suits your needs best. This is the final result of the chipping, which is going to be guide for further weathering. As you can see, it's not dry yet, but I assume that you guessed the idea. In order to seal everything to prevent it from reactivating the Chipping medium, we're gonna use AK mass varnish. Next, we will do a wash from bright green as if the damages over the years on the tractor reveal the earlier paint or um, the paint that wasn't damaged from the sun and warmed from the use. So pretty much that's the base color. We're gonna use a bit of that and it's gonna using capillary action it's gonna stick just where you need it. Now we're gonna pre-moisten the surface which will ease the spread of the wash.
it looks scary at the beginning but you'll see that one spread it will match the color and everything will come into place We're going to repeat the process over the most of the upper parts of the tractor but we will not bother you showing you everything. It's visible the difference between the depth here and here. This is the completed wash as you can see the difference in the depth of the color is huge it's not dried yet but overall look it's like that do you see the green in the angles small places good start for weathering the next wash we are doing because the color of the hood is different and the paint was bluish in color we are gonna add a nuance spreading a little bit less compared to the tractor but with the same idea the color looks odd but in the end you'll see the results is the results are Wonderful. This is the end result of both blue and green washes. On to the next step. Before the next stage of the weathering, we're going to paint the handles and the seat, which is nothing of particular interest, so we're going to skip on that part. Next, we're going to use some oils and the sponge technique to brighten a little bit the overall look. that does very fine detailing as you can see once the streaks are done over it it will blend everything together and will look even better than what you see now This is after the first stage of the sponge. It seems a little bit overdone, but most of that will be covered after the dust is applied, so you'll lose the density of all the chipping and the rust. We're continuing with the streaks. The chips are going to be used as a starting point and with burnt umber and raw umber we're going to make the streaks with a fine brush. And then we're gonna blend everything with the moist and white spirit flat brush.
this easily can be overdone however oils are forgiving and can be cleaned the final effect will be visible once everything is dry here you can see the streaks before blending and here you can see the streaks after the whole tractor is done with them you can uh, do it with several different hours uh, sorry several different colors and depending on the effect that you're looking for it will give you the idea what you have to go for we're doing the same thing with the hood in there it will be more visible because of the color otherwise the technique is exactly the same while the oil streaks are drying we are gonna paint the wheels or the part where it rubs with the tracks it should be shining metal and for that purpose we are using Mr. Metal Color which is a very nice representation of a metal looking color although those parts are not so visible for the purpose of this video we're doing them in order to blend the effect of the seat we're gonna uh, filter it with AK camouflage filter that will blend the brown and make it look more proper even though the seat is not visible once the hood is installed I would like to make it look a bit better than it is right now we have fixed the truck and now we're gonna paint it with AK dark tracks and shade of rust tracks again AK in between the individual tracks to hide the basic color of the track with the proper one this is the second type of truck paint we're gonna do some nuances over the tracks just for a sake of difference It's got to be random and once the dirt and dust is applied everything will come into place. In the final stage of the painting of the track before we applied mud and dust we are gonna use true metal uh, rubbed onto the bottom of the box. Uh, and this is a new technique that we thought of and now we're gonna show you what's the idea we're gonna rub the, the track where it should meet with the ground and let's see what the result is it is visible how only on the finest edges it touches the steel and that creates the most realistic effect 
using AK True Metal. For the inner part, I'm gonna use a finger rubbing. I'm not gonna press very hard, just to create a shade of steel color, which is not so visible on the tractor, but the part which are create very nice effect. 